Hi everyone, I'm Ashley Welsh. I'm a teaching and learning strategist in Skylight, our Science Center for Learning and Teaching at UBC. Hi, and I'm Warren Code. I'm Associate Director at Skylight. And today we'll be telling you about a large initiative that we had here in our Faculty of Science departments uh, and talk about how that relates to building teaching expertise. For a bit of context, we are based at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver on Canada's West Coast. And the initiative we'll be talking about is in our Faculty of Science, which has nine departments. Uh, during the period of the initiative, about seven to 8,000 undergraduate students, and now about 9,000. Uh, we'd like to start with a little video clip. Uh, this is a portion of a slightly longer clip that talks a bit about the arrangement of the initiative. The Carl Wyman Science Education Initiative brought together resources and an organizational plan to change the way we teach science and mathematics such that our students learn more. The three steps essentially are decide what students should learn, measure what it is that they are learning, and decide what opportunities we can provide so they move toward expertise. How are we going to change our teaching practice to try the next time to do a better job and collect more evidence and, and iterate toward improvement? When we started, nobody knew who we were, nobody knew what we were trying to do. We started to see some successes. The courses that we worked on worked better. And we got to the point where professors wanted to work with us. I remember at about year four, we took a professor's course out of the, the plan just because we thought we were running out of time. That professor flew into our office and said, why, why can't I work on the class? I want my class to be transformed. Teaching fellows play a huge role in all of the steps of transformation. They watch you in the classroom, seeing what you're doing and give you suggestions about things you could be doing differently. What's the best way to, to get do that? It. Because I find if I pose it, someone tell me the answer, it's going to be one of the same three students who eventually says it every time. The best combination is if they can talk to themselves to come to an answer, then you go over time as you repeat and change and tweak and improve, you get to a place where you have an approach that really works for your students. And that's what's great about it. As you saw in the video, the core part of the model was the involvement of discipline-based teaching and learning specialists, uh, as in the title of our presentation, which we called STLFs, Science Teaching and Learning Fellows, on our campus. Uh, these fellows were typically hired at the postdoctoral or contract faculty level. Uh, they would typically have a graduate level background in that department's discipline uh, and some interest and experience in teaching though usually no serious training in teaching or in education research. Uh, I was one of these fellows myself, for example, in our math department, and uh, my PhD was in math and I had done some teaching, uh, but I had not had uh, sort of extensive training and I had had no background in education research at that point. Um, the SCLS would partner with faculty on bringing evidence-based teaching methods into our classrooms and collaborate in publishing what was learned. So to succeed in their role, they'd have to build expertise in all these three areas shown here, which would mean learning a lot about the education literature as applied to post-secondary teaching and learning and familiarity with what evidence looks like in education as compared to their science or math background. Uh, there would also be some occasion to teach a course, but most of the STLF's time would be spent on this development and these course improvement projects with faculty, including design, collecting data and scholarship. Uh, we had between one and four STLFs in each department at any given time. So in the peak years of the initiative, there were about 20 fellows at the same time across our departments. Uh, so there was a community of people attempting this fairly novel work. One of the things we wanted to do for this presentation was to map what we had learned throughout the years in the Carl Wyman Science Education Initiative to this framework for teaching expertise that was developed by scholars at the University of Calgary and published in 2017. And it's this idea of a, a developmental continuum for people engaging in teaching or expertise or academic development um, from the idea of exploration when you first start learning about your context, understanding something, exploring yourself, your own teaching, your own expertise in that area to then actively engaging and implementing new strategies and then moving more towards this expansion of yourself and your ideas, 
contributions to your community, as well as educational leadership. Within this framework, they talk about five facets of teaching expertise. The first being teaching and supporting learning. The next looking more at professional learning and development of people. There is the aspect of mentorship between individuals, the moving towards research, scholarship and inquiry. And finally, a bigger piece around educational leadership and being leaders within teaching expertise. So one of the things we wanted to do was look at the Carl Wyman Science Education Initiative over the years and map it to this framework. So when it started around 2007, this was really a, a space of exploration of the people involved. Within the facet of teaching and supporting learning, there was a lot around course transformations, really looking at making courses more active, better understanding students' conceptual understanding and misconceptions, and um, changing teaching to support student learning in that aspect and really rethinking the type of assessment that's occurring and what are we actually assessing. Within the professional learning and development facet, this was very focused on the STLFs to help them feel more comfortable in their new role, learning more about educational research, and also how they can work with faculty to transform these courses. If we move to looking sort of beyond 2011, this is when we really see people starting to engage um, so implementing new strategies, seeking out opportunities. Uh, the teaching and supporting learning was sort of an ongoing process through the initiative. And in professional learning and development, um, both the STLFs were still having professional development, but then they were starting to mentor faculty in that sense or provide professional development for faculty members at our university. The, within the mentorship, there was a lot that happened with the earlier STLFs who may have started in 2007 or 2008, then mentoring incoming STLFs about the roles, the skills, the responsibilities, what worked for them, what didn't. So that was really nice. And we had these uh, weekly meetings uh, derived around professional development and where people could share their experiences with one another. And in 2011 is when we started to see more research and scholarships start to emerge, whether that was conference presentations and also peer reviewed publications. And finally, if we move looking sort of beyond 2014 is really when we saw this bigger piece of expansion of the type of work that both STLFs and faculty members at our university were working in. Um, within professional learning and development, many of our STLFs or faculty members were starting to create graduate student courses around teaching and learning within STEM. In mentorship, a program of paired teaching where faculty members experience and active learning techniques would mentor incoming faculty members or those who are new to the idea of active learning. In research and scholarship, at this time we had over 100 peer-reviewed publications. And so we really had built the momentum there and we're moving forward. And finally, in educational leadership, our university has more um, tenure track teaching faculty and we are able to partner with them and build this momentum. And many of our alumni from the CWSEI went on to tenure track teaching positions or within academic development to, to further um, educational development. So to finish off, we thought we would update you on the current state of things. Uh, as the initiative ended in 2017, uh, we have uh, secured funding for an ongoing set of embedded positions, which we have called science education specialists based in our departments. We have about one per large department. Um, and there have also been additional tenure track faculty positions in our educational leadership stream which is a teaching focus stream, but where there is uh, part of the time, there's an expectation of what we call educational leadership, meaning a contribution to teaching and learning beyond one's own classroom. So this could be um, scholarship, for example, uh, related to teaching or other kinds of leadership. Uh, in terms of the kinds of work that are done, um, we've seen an increased focus on issues around equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, whereas this was not so much a focus of the initiative, uh, at, the, at the time, uh, the CWSEI focused on uh, really around bringing in learning centered teaching into the classroom and uh, working together to produce teaching expertise. 
Uh, and then the, another thing we've seen is a shift from teaching methods to more curriculum level projects. So uh, we've learned a lot about what's happened in our courses and now departments have more questions about what, what are the implications for our programs and now that we know more about uh, our student learning uh, at the course level. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to your questions online and uh, in terms of follow-up resources, there's quite a bit, the story of the initiative, uh, sort of the official story would be Carl Wyman's 2017 book. Um, I also collaborated with a colleague at Colorado, which had a, a similar kind of initiative over a similar time span, uh, which we called the Science Education Initiative Handbook, where you can learn a lot more about the model and how we implemented it. Uh, there are many resources at the CWSEI website and then for uh, the newest things, that's our Skylight website, which continues to be updated. Thanks.